uh, just to talk a little bit about being critical and having um, really highly critical thoughts, being self-critical, essentially. Um, the reason why I'm talking about this is because I, 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 I am very self-critical um, and I've learned ways to ease that critical mind and I do think that most people um, I think as humans, it's the human nature to, I mean, we're, we're constantly in suffering and we allow our minds to sort of ruminate and go over thoughts. Uh, but I also think that it's something that we can release as well. So even though it is part of the human conditioning to do that, it's also part of the human conditioning to recondition yourself. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, in a moment. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because last week, and let me just preface that, it's pretty typical for people who deal with depression and who have anxiety to have more critical thoughts about themselves. I mean, you know, like that is where you're constantly going up and up and up in an anxious state or going down and down and down in a spiral of like, you know, you're so dumb, blah, 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 blah. Why did you say this? Why did you do that? And being more and more depressed. So you can go in these two different crazy directions. And so as someone who has, who, who still deals with depression and anxiety, I have learned how to calm that voice and soothe myself. And, um, but it's taken a long time. And so I found myself last week, at the end of last week, where I had, I felt I had approached something that needed, um, I'd been thinking about taking action on something and then I did and then I felt like the action was not like the right way to approach something. And I felt like I had approached it so inappropriately and all of a sudden I let myself be in a crazy spiral of thoughts where I just was like totally down on myself and there was really no reason but I felt there was a reason and I thought about all the angles and I just let myself completely ruminate and get into a really bad spiral and again I I have learned ways to soothe myself or pull myself back get perspective and I really didn't use those tools because I just was so in it. And it actually followed me into the weekend. And um, and yeah, so then Saturday I was going out to dinner with a girlfriend of mine from, you know, back in my raw foods days. And uh, yeah, we hung out and I met her at a restaurant and I was so happy to see her. We sat outside. And, um, you know, I mean, we, we met, we had like a four hour dinner. It was awesome just to catch up, but it started off with her sharing about how she, um, she as well in a similar situation had taken action on something and she felt like, you know, it fell flat. It was basically her selling an apartment or selling her, she's a uh, real estate agent and she felt like she lost out on something and she just felt like talking about what she should have said and how it could have gone. And she kept going on about it. And I realized as I was listening to her and she, she was like apologetic that she was even talking about it. And I was like, no, please share. Like I just wanted her to get it out. And I realized she kept saying it again. And I, I had to just sort of pause. I mean, like I didn't let her know this right in the moment, but I started to use the languaging that I give to myself was like, it's going to be okay. Like, you know, you did the best you could. Um, you, you know, you're learning from this experience. You're, you know, just sort of have a different perspective on it. Like maybe like there were reasons why it wasn't supposed to happen. And also, you know, this person that she was working with didn't really listen to what she said and she was just really upset that she didn't really, you know, hit the hammer on the head a little bit harder in this round. And it was, and I don't, you know, I didn't even tell her that like I was sort of experiencing the exact same thing, but I just realized like, whoa, this can be so harmful just to like hang on to these thoughts. And, um, you know, in the end we had such a great dinner to catch up. And in the end I felt such a reminder of how much we are so hard on ourselves 
so hard on ourselves. So just find ways to be easy. And so it reminded me how much and how important it was for me to do my own clearing exercises when these things happen. And I do want to say that like, you know, it is part of the human condition to be in the suffering mind. And as well, um, I'm learning just recently in the last like few years about epigenetics and how I have like a little, what it means here. And it just means that, um, from, from Wikipedia. Uh, epigenetics is the study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. So instead of you just saying like, this is what I was given, you have ways to condition your own mind, which is by positive affirmations, mantras, meditations. You don't even have to sit and do a meditation. You can do a, you know, um, um, you know, a crossword puzzle, you can do gardening, um, you can do coloring, you can go for a long walk. Uh, there's so many ways to get into that meditative state, but also to soothe yourself and not just like go on a walk and still ruminate. Instead, just allow yourself to maybe take some take some real perspective on like what really happened. And if it was that terrible, that's okay. We're going to learn from it. Um, and then you have to let it go. Now I will say I do love journaling, journaling. I have a couple of things here, journaling to process because it's really hard for you to stay, um, really angry when you're writing out, like, I'm so dumb. Like, why did I say that? Maybe I say, why did I say that? But maybe it, something after that will be like, well, you know, they, this, that, this, you can process it. And by the end, you get a little bit of a clearing. It's like you've let it go. Um, and you get perspective. You can read the journal again or just like rip it out and throw it in the garbage. Um, but you get, and I, you get sort of like, okay, that was really harsh. How can I have like a better approach to what I'm saying to myself? Um, you know, I, again, like, even though I let myself go down this crazy path, I realize like, you know, in talking to my friend on Saturday, how, how I like, I knew the path that I was going down and I still let myself, but you know, I also felt like it was productive for me to keep thinking about it. And once you start to learn that you do that, that's like sniffing out your own bullshit, right? So just allowing yourself, maybe you need to go there for a moment, but you pull yourself back. And that's a good way just in sort of knowing your own BS and also then knowing your own triggers. Like um, maybe it's certain people, maybe it's a job you need to let go of or just a certain circumstance in your work um, or with a person sort of knowing who to stay away from or um, generally, you know, sort of phasing certain parts and people out of, uh, of your life out is a really good way to do it as well. Um, you know, uh, there's a quote by Brene Brown, it's talk to yourself like you would someone you love. And that's actually really, really, really a good reminder. And when I was watching my friends share so sort of really viciously about herself, I was like, whoa, like, I mean, I, I saw myself in that same like space talking to myself in that same way. And I realized like, no, like this is really unhealthy. Um, and th those are also things that we've been told. Those are not things that are just showing up. They have been told to us in some way, shape or form. And we are, you know, we need to do the work or we, learn that that's not really true. We are like amazing people. We are doing the best we can with what we have in this moment. Um, you know, uh, there's a video I can share with you. Uh, you know, Tara Brock really has this really great self-compassion, um, you know, application. You really just sort of learn how to remind yourself with all those things that I just said about being in the present moment and just sort of talking to yourself as if you were, you know, as if you were your, you know, what is it? Someone you love. And hopefully, you know, we can be critical of ourselves 
you know, in so much as it's something that's going to help us like grow, but like just enough where we can just like move on from it and not let it like weigh us down even more. Um, there's a mantra that I've been saying to myself uh, and it's just super simple because it's been pretty hard for me the last few weeks and I really try, I've been trying to like um, take care of like myself and manage my own, my own uh, emotions and this is so simple but it's, it's okay. It's okay. This is something that I've been practicing and even I'm getting emotional because it's really helped me. It's a super simple thing just to tell yourself that it's okay because it's okay. Like there's not much you can do. It's like, this is what is and it's okay. And then you just deal with it and then you move on, right? Like it's, there's this like Buddhist thing about the, the two arrows where the first arrow is the incident. Um, circumstance and then the second arrow is like you like the arrow coming into your own body the second arrow is you just like pushing into that same wound over and over again that is what is happening when we're thinking on the self-critical thoughts and it's just a good reminder to you know be easy on yourself take care of yourself um, practicing gratitude mindfulness in ways again you don't have to meditate I know sometimes I even get a little bit overwhelmed by like you know the need to meditate and the meditation is just being present to what's going on right now all right i hope that was helpful um please comment if you want and uh have a wonderful day let yourself just like be in the present moment love yourself and remember that it's okay all right thanks